All right, let me go back to the perturbation theory that we discussed. There are several issues which I will have to repeat again once more. So, first of all, we said that to start the perturbation theory, we wrote H as H naught plus B, that is important. And we made sure that the psi Hartree-Fock is an eigens ground state eigenstate of H naught, because that was our idea of starting the perturbation theory. So, we said that the H naught is n particle operator, which is sum of the Fock operator. Okay. So, this is how we discussed H naught. Please understand this is a n particle operator. So, these i's are not spin orbitals. I just want to make sure because people get confused. These are the coordinates. So, whenever I am writing f of something, that is a coordinate. So, I have r1, r x1, x2, xn basically. Fock operator in terms of spin orbitals. So, I have r1 omega 1. So, these i's are not spin orbitals because the Hamiltonian is a function of electron coordinates. So, I am writing the Hamiltonian. So, this must be function of electron coordinates. So, this is a function sum of the Fock operator. Each of them, if I have f of 1, similarly I have f of 2 and so on. Although, as far as eigenvalue equation is concerned, any one of them is good. So, I have the eigenvalue equation of chi i 1 as epsilon i chi i 1. And please note that I am explicitly working with the canonical Hartree Fock just for simplification. So, here these are coordinates, chi i is a spin orbital. So, whether I take f 1 or f 2, the eigenvalue system will be same. So, that is the reason when I do eigenvalue, I take only 1 f of 1, because the eigenvalue system will be same. But when I reconstruct the 0 order Hamiltonian, they must be sum of f of 1, f of 2, f of 3 up to f of n. Just want to clarify, and this, there, there should be coordinates of the electron, spin and space, both. And we also know f of 1, f of 1, which is f of x 1, is h of 1 plus sum over j integral chi j star 2, 1 by r 1, 2, 1 minus p 1, 2, chi j 2, d tau. Please note that everything in the parenthesis is a function of coordinates. So, this is a co coordinate this is a coordinate, so which has integrated. So, that is why it is a dummy. These are also coordinates. So, everything is coordinate. So, explicitly what is written is the spin orbital chi j. Okay? And this acts on a chi i to give me epsilon i chi i, but in the definition of f operator, only one chi j appears. I want to mention this. Again, some people have confusion. I saw in the mid sem paper, they wrote chi i, chi j and that got totally confused. Because obviously, this is a integration of only one coordinate of electron, not both the coordinates of electron. Otherwise, I will not get the Fock operator. When I go to the energy, I have a two electron integral which will bring in i and j. But here, I, chi i 1 is not there. Chi i 1 is, will be here when it acts on this. Okay? But the definition of Fock operator just includes this part. So, this is something that you have to first understand properly. So, this actually is a 1 by r 1 2 integrated over the other electron, one of the electrons in a, any spin orbital chi j. So, this summation is actually 1 to n, but this summation j is spin orbital. Okay? This is a summation of a spin orbital. This is coordinates of electrons. So, they can be any spin orbital and all of them are accounted for and then I take the Coulomb and the exchange part. So, the like potential due to the second electron or the third electron that is not important now, because by summing over spin orbitals, I am taking care of all the electrons. Okay? So, that is what I have said repeatedly. So, I define the single particle Fock operator. It sum over all the n electron coordinates give me my n particle operator. So, H naught is a n particle operator, whereas f of 1 or any f of i is a one particle operator. Okay? But this is a non-interacting problem now, because H naught is sum of one electron operator. 
because it is not interacting its eigenfunctions are nothing but products or antisymmetrized products of the eigenfunctions of the f which is basically orbital because f is a spin orbital which is basically spin orbital because f is a one particle operator so i have already told you any one particle function is a orbital or spin orbital depending on whether it is space coordinate or space spin coordinate so these are now spin orbitals so i take a antisymmetrized product of this i will get the eigen function of h so the ground state eigen function happens to be of course h not psi hartree-fock which is now so psi hartree-fock we already know is an antisymmetrized product so chi 1 chi 2 to chi n and this gives me the zeroth order energy which is sum of epsilon i 1 to n psi r. So this is the eigenvalue equation of H naught okay because it is a non-interacting problem. So if I take an anti-symmetrized if I take an anti-symmetrized product of this spin orbital which is psi hat I know the result is an eigenfunction and the eigenvalues are simply sum of the orbital energies okay. Is it clear? So remember we had an approximate wave function psi hat approximate to the exact Hamiltonian. However, I now discover that this is an exact eigenfunction of another Hamiltonian H0, an approximate Hamiltonian H0. So the eigenfunction which was approximate eigenfunction of H is however an exact eigenfunction of the approximate Hamiltonian. So I have just changed the picture. Now I made this approximate state exact state, the Hamiltonian is changed from H to H0. Further, with an M basis problem, I could generate many determinants. So I, I categorize them as psi AR, psi ABRS and so on. And we find that for the same reason, since all those spin orbitals are eigenfunctions of this Fock operator each of this determinant is also an eigenfunction of the H0, okay, is it clear? For the same reason because they are antisymmetrized products of the spin orbitals. Some of them are virtual orbitals, but they are also included in this solution. So let us assume that I have a solution which goes up to capital M, which is much larger than N. Although I am explicitly using only capital N for the definition of the Fock operator, my solutions are capital M, which is of course done in a hartree fock ruthan basis, that is a different matter. I will not worry right now, how do I get the solutions? So those, with those unoccupied orbitals, if I construct this excited determinants of H0, then each of them is an eigenstate of H0 and with an eigenvalue, which can be written in reference to this as, so let us call this sum over epsilon i i equal to 1 to n as e naught 0 by the de, by the notation of the perturbation theory since it is a ground state eigenfunction for the 0 th order Hamiltonian let us call it e naught 0. So I can say with respect to e naught 0 I have one extra energy orbital energy and one less right and, and so on. So I can now write down all the eigenvalue equations of H0. So E00 plus epsilon r so in fact entire n tuply excited determinants can be formed as an eigenfunction of H0. Is it clear? Note that this is this is the entire thing is now in n particle space. So these are all n particle determinants, okay, which are formed out of one particle orbit or, or, or particle functions or spin orbitals, and they are in particular the solutions of the Fock operator, and that is why it is called Hartree-Fock perturbation theory. So this sets the stage because now I have a H naught, which presumably is a dominant part of H, and that's a question that you can still ask. But I presume it is a dominant part of H simply because its ground state eigenfunction is a very good approximation to the exact eigenfunction because it recovers 95 to 97 percent of total energy. So I presume that H0 is a dominant part of H 
and of course the solutions all solutions of h not are known in this basis so that's not a problem i can keep on increasing m i will get more and more solutions but in principle in that basis all solutions are known and please remember in quantum chemistry everything that we now do is in a basis so even i have repeated i repeat again i had told before that there is nothing called exact hartree-fock even the hartree-fock is in a basis okay so exact energy is also in a basis so whatever we are going to discuss np2 ci couple cluster everything will be defined in a basis there is nothing called exact because we don't have to have exact hartree-fock but we know when m will go in the limit m tends to infinity everything will reach its exact limit okay so whatever we are talking is in, of course an m basis problem so in that basis my entire solutions of h not are known which are mcn in number okay mcn is the number of determinants that i can form so mcn number of solutions are already known this is the dominant part of h so i can start my perturbation theory with that okay so we did the perturbation theory and I again will just write the final result of E01. E01 is something first order perturbation I derived on that day and that was the 0th order wave function which is psi Hartree Fock ground state V psi Hartree Fock. So it was the expectation value of the perturbation operator with respect to the psi 00, 0 which is the ground state eigenfunction of H0 because I am looking at a ground state correction to the energy. So, the first order connect correction merely comes with this and then if you see E naught 0, if you look at E naught 0, since this is an eigen function of H naught, I can write E naught 0 as psi Hartree Fock H naught psi Hartree Fock correct by definition because psi Hartree Fock is already an eigen function of H naught. So, if I take an average value exactly like this then this is obviously not 0 which is nothing but sum of the orbital energy anyway. But this is alternative way of writing because this is an Eigen function of H0 with E0 0 as the Eigen value. So this will become E0 0 psi Hartree Fock, psi Hartree Fock, psi Hartree Fock is 1. So I get back E0 0. Is it clear to everybody? So this I can always write any Eigen value equation. Eigen value can be written as an average value with, uh, with respect to its own Eigen function. Okay? So if I add these two then of course I see that E0 0 plus E0 1, now that everything is same I can only add the operators. Okay? So I have psi Hartree Fock H psi Hartree Fock which is nothing but E Hartree Fock. So, we had already noticed that the psi Hartree Fock is an Eigen function of H0, but the Eigen value unfortunately was not E Hartree Fock, it was sum of the orbital energy. Now we will see that if I add the first order correction to the ground state, then together I recover the E Hartree Fock. Okay? And we can do lots of other things that we will now talk about, but the important thing to realize that within this perturbation theory, any improvement to Hartree Fock energy will only occur at second order because up to first order we are recovering the Hartree Fock energy. Okay? So, that is the reason the genesis that the correlation theory starts from MP2. Okay? So, MP2 is the first uh, correlation energy because correlation energy is going beyond Hartree Fock. I told you already it is a difference between exact energy minus Hartree Fock. So, unless and unless you have improved from the Hartree Fock, you do not have any correlation energy. So, it starts only at the second order, which we will do later. But I just want to make some remarks on this point that at the first order, you do not have any improvement. So, I because I cannot write H naught psi Hartree Fock as E Hartree Fock psi Hartree Fock, but with the first order correction, I can write. The question that was asked was very interesting that can I have an H naught? So, can I have an H naught? Let us call it H naught prime, some other H naught, where psi Hartree Fock remains, it is a 0th order Hamiltonian, remains the eigenstate, but the eigenvalue now becomes E Hartree Fock. So, can I have this? This is question mark. You understand the problem. Can I have such a H naught, H naught prime? I am not saying this H naught, some other 0th order Hamiltonian such that 
I can write such a nice equation. This is very nice because there I can interpret the Hartree Fock as very nicely everything as an eigenfunction and eigenvalue of the of a zeroth order Hamilton. If it is so, then of course you would say that the correlation energy should start from first order. We will see what happens, which means if I write H with some other Hamiltonian H naught prime plus V prime, of course, if, a, if H naught becomes H naught prime, V will also change. So, let me call this V prime, okay. Then is this possible? That is the question. We will we'll come back to this and how to make it possible, okay. And then, then do you have a correlation energy from first order? That is the question. So, I, I, I have not answered the question. I will come back, all right. Can I erase this? I will just keep this on the board. If you realize little bit from these equations that what is the difference between E Hartree Fock and E 0 0? Only one number, E not 1, right? There's, this is a number, remember. So, there is only one number which is differing from E 0 0 to E Hartree Fock. So, it is very easy to bring the E 0 0 to E Hartree Fock. By simply writing a new partitioning where I write H as H naught prime plus V prime and make H naught prime H naught plus this number which was E naught 1 before. My previous H naught gave me E naught 1. That is a number. I can simply add that number. Do you understand what I am saying? So, I, I, I redo, I rescale my Hamiltonian by adding a number which means my H naught is nothing but prime is nothing but old H naught plus psi Hartree Fock old V psi Hartree Fock. If I do this, then it is very easy to see that this is exactly what I will get because what happens? Psi Hartree Fock remains the eigenstate of H naught prime because it is only scaled by number. Eigen value will be scaled by the same number, right? So, the eigenvalue will become E Hartree Fock. So, in fact, the question that I am asking is actually a trivial question because this is only a number. I can always scale and all my eigen solutions of new H naught prime will also be scaled by this number, right? So, there is no problem. They will all remain eigenstates. Is it clear? Please ask question if it is not clear. I know these are not done. Huh? So, I am trying to again repeat. So, I am now reconstructing a new Hamiltonian H naught prime new 0 order Hamiltonian by simply adding to my old H naught this quantity which is not a problem which I can calculate. I have V, I can calculate this. I will do the calculation more explicitly a little later and of course, my V prime will also change old V minus this, correct? I will come back to this V prime little bit later. But I just want to tell you that of course, my H must be same. So, if I have added a number in H naught, same number must be subtracted to have the V prime. Now, remember my perturbation should be now V prime. I cannot have H naught prime as 0th order and V as the perturbation, that is wrong. So, my perturbation operator is also changed to V prime, which is simply the old V minus psi hat of V psi hat. If I do this, then it is very clear that I can answer this question. So, I have, I have indeed, I can tick this box. But then the question is what happens to MP1? So, when I do the MP1 now, remember how do I get the first order correction? Perturbation and I, I average value with respect to psi Hartree Fock. So, what is my E naught prime? So, let me call it E naught prime 1. So, what is my E naught 0 prime? That is E Hartree Fock, right? That is the new. So, whenever I am saying prime, it is a new, new partitioning. So, what will be E naught prime now? Psi Hartree Fock, right? That is still the eigenfunction. V prime psi Hartree Fock, correct? So, what is the result? Replace V prime psi Hartree Fock, V psi Hartree Fock. And this is a number, this is a number. So, the number will simply come out because psi Hartree Fock is normalized to 1. So, it will become psi Hartree Fock V psi Hartree Fock and that is still 0.
So, this was a number, but the same number has been subtracted in the V prime. So, your V prime average value with respect to psi hat reform, it is 0. So, although it is nice that I could get E hat fog as the, as the eigen value of H naught prime, I still do not have a correlation at MP1, that is 0. So, in a way, as far as correlation is concerned, either H naught or H naught prime, I do not care. Both are good because they do not they don't give me any extra solution at first order. As far as correlation energy is concerned, the improvement only starts from second order. At the second order, of course, things will start to change, which I will come little late, much later when I do the second order perturbation theory. But I just want you to get convinced that at the first order, by simply adding a number, it does not help. Any question? There are many, many things that you can do. This is not the only way to get H naught prime. I can keep doing lots of things. In fact, there used to be very good papers which are simply titled, what is a good H naught? Some of the papers are titled, what is a good H naught or partitioning of the Hamiltonian. How do I partition the Hamiltonian? And lots of interesting paper in the 1960s have been done by Diner, Clavery and Mulryu. They have written a lot of interesting paper in the 60s. Malru is who, who came in this Goa conference, yeah, the same man. So, he did a lot of work on what kind of partitioning will be good. And you can see that at the first hands, up to first order it is trivial, but at the higher order, second order onward things will change depending on how, how I partition. Okay. So, second order onward results will keep changing. So, what is a good H naught? It is a very interesting title of a paper. You know, how, how, how do I get a good H naught and can I play with it? And of course, I will get a different perturbation theory. I will get a different perturbation series from the second order onward depending on how I change my H naught. Is it clear? Of course, second order I have not done, but trust me that the from second order results will start to change depending on what is my H naught prime. I want to convince you that by just adding a number like E naught 1, previous E naught 1, I do not get any change. Only thing is that I can be happy that the Hartree Fock is a eigenvalue of H naught prime. That is my only happiness, but then E naught prime is 0. First order correction is 0. So, eventually, what is important is 0th plus first order is E Hartree Fock. That part is not changing either in unprime or prime partition. Okay? Before I go forward and look at different partitioning, let me now analyze what is V just want to write down V explicitly. Note that your total Hamiltonian is sum over H of I plus 1 by R I. Again, these are coordinates of electrons. So, whenever I am writing Hamiltonian, they are coordinates of electrons. Okay, I's are all coordinates. And then I have a Fock operator, which if you remember was H of I plus sum over chi j star 2, 1 by modulus R i minus R 2, sorry, into 1 minus P 1 2, a P i 2, chi j 2 theta. Please note that you have to be you know, since I have started writing i, I am managing i. So, what did I do? Everywhere coordinate 1, I have written i. It does not matter. Okay. So, it is just that you should be very com comfortable in writing this. So, this should not be p 1 2, this will be p i 2. Interchanges i and 2. So, it does not matter. So, then I am saying my h naught is sum over Fock operator, right. So, what would be my v now? So, if you look at this part, if I sum over Fock operator, I first get this part, but then I get an additional part, okay, which must be subtracted from this. So, let me call this part, this part, sum over j, this whole part, 
let me call this V Hartree form. So, let me write F of i plus H of i plus V Hartree form, where V Hartree form i is this in the parenthesis. So, that is exactly that extra coulomb and exchange operator, okay. And your H naught contains sum of all such V Hartree form i, okay. Remember, again, I, I again repeat that this J is a spin orbital. This i is a coordinate. Okay. Because j is a spin orbital. Okay. Normally I would have written f of 1, but then when I want going to do any f of i, a dummy variable, I must uh, I must not worry. So then what happens to v? So v now becomes v Hartree Fock, uh, uh, v now becomes V Hartree Fock subtracted from 1 by Rij. So, it becomes 1 by Rij minus sum over i V Hartree Fock, correct? I am just talking of this partition. Of course, if your H naught becomes H naught prime, then V prime will have a further subtraction, okay. But this is the, this is the V. You can now see my H naught is sum of the Fock operator. So, if I do H naught plus V, I get back my Hamiltonian. Please make sure because when I do H naught, I have a sum of Fock operator. So, sum of H of i, sum of V Hartree Fock i, and V has 1 by Rij minus V Hartree Fock i. So, the V Hartree Fock i sum gets cancelled, and I am with H of i sum plus 1 by Rij sum, correct? So, I get back my Hamiltonian. So, please make sure. So, basically, this part has been added to H of i to give me a Fock. The same part, the sum is subtracted to give me V. So, many, many people may think that V is just 1 by Rij, that is not true. Since I am starting from Hartree Fock perturbation, I am starting from F as my original operator, one particular operator to start with. If I would have started with H, that is if my H naught was just sum of H of I, then of course V would have been Rij, but that I have discarded long back because I know that is not a good one particle solution. That was this thing that I discussed that that would have been the simplest to have a non-interacting picture and this would have been perturbation. But that I have discarded since my, my solution now includes an additional operator, okay. I have to make sure that that operator is subtracted when I define the perturbation operator, okay. And then you can see what is psi 0 or psi Hartree Fock, V psi Hartree Fock. This is my E 0 1, right. No, this is my E01. I hope you can do this. I hope you can do this. This is an average value. You can use letter rule to tell me now. So, I have two terms psi Hartree Fock 1 by Rij psi Hartree Fock minus psi Hartree Fock sum over one particle operator. V Hartree Fock I psi Hartree. Remember again, this is a coordinate of electron. So, can you write me Slater rule? Remember, this Slater rule is the first one that we do it, type A, like average value. So, tell me this first part half of half of AB, I am calling it instead of IJAB, chi A, chi B. Anti-symmetrized chi A chi B, right? Do this part. This is this. This is the one electron part. Like sum over H of I, you did. How did I do? Sum over chi I, H chi I, correct? So write it. Sum over A chi A, A V Hartree Fock chi A. That is the first thing I will write because V Hartree Fock is my one part. Is it agreed? Everybody agrees. So, this is a one particle operator. So, I will take its, its Eigen function, uh, its uh, average value, sorry, its average value with respect to each of the spin orbitals, A equal to 1 to n. I am explicitly writing A and B just not to confuse with this i and j, okay. So, I write chi A, V Hartree for chi A and then the coordinate can be anything, 1, 1, 1, whatever, does not matter. Then what will I do? I will, I will expand V Hartree for from here. Okay. Now, if we expand V Hartree Fock, 
you already have let me let me write this in 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 greater details in actual integral form so what is chi a v hat ri for chi a so this is equal to integral chi a star 1 v hat ri for 1 chi a 1 theta 1 agreed now i will expand chi a 1 v hat ri for by this expansion this is my v hat ri for Okay, I will bring in another sum of the orbitals. So this is equal to integral chi a star 1. The V Hartree Fock has one more integration over d tau 2. So that will anyway come. But before that, another chi j, which I now call chi b, sum over b. Please remember that only j I am replacing by b to be more consistent. So b equal to 1 to n, spin orbital, chi b 2. 1 by r r i is now r 1, 1 by r 1 2, 1 minus p 1 2 that i should be replaced by 1 now and then chi b 2. So, I have this chi j 2, chi b 2 and then this is this is a this is a v fox. So, v fox started from here correct and then I have chi a 1. Then d tau 2 is a part of v fox and of course, d tau 1 is something that I have to do. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, chi b star. Yeah. Okay. I can shift it around, and I can write this as sum over b equal to one to n chi a chi b anti-symmetrized chi a chi. Correct by just shifting this around that is okay because this is not exchange huh? this is just that I am writing one first and two first it does not matter whichever right hand right. So, this becomes chi a v hat for chi a now what I have to do I have to sum over a remember my this quantity e not 1 this minus this right I am doing by letter rule. So, your final e not 1 is half of sum over a b chi a chi b anti symmetrized chi a chi b minus now there is a further summation a comes and of course summation of b is already here so it's a b chi a chi b anti symmetrized it is exactly the same thing except the half factor right. So, you get finally minus half sum over a b chi a chi b anti symmetrized So, that is your E naught 1. So, in a very long form E naught 1 is that same repulsion energy with the sub minus half minus. So, now what is happening remember in the orbital energy when I did that I had this part double counted. That is why it was different from our Hartree-Fock energy, some of the orbital energy and that double counting is precisely going to be subtracted when I add E naught 1 and hence I am getting E Hartree-Fock. You remember my E naught 0 plus E naught 1 is E Hartree-Fock, E naught 0 was sum of the orbital energy which is actually E Hartree-Fock double and, the, and this part double counted, this part is actually includes half. So, now I have subtracted this to, to restore sanity, so I get back E Hartree-Fock. Okay. So, I just want to complete this again instead of ij I will write a b. So, it makes it easy. So, epsilon a if you remember was chi a a h chi a and this is something that I have given in this papers also plus sum over b chi a chi b anti symmetrized chi a chi a only sum over b here many people have got confused with this epsilon a also orbital n is a number. So, it must be a 2 electron integral, but no sum over a because I am writing for a specific spin orbital. This is actually obtained, this is nothing but chi a f chi a, correct. If I do chi a f chi a, you will easily get this because b is the incomplete integration, but this completes the integration over d tau 1, d tau 2. So, I have got the orbital energy. So, if I do sum over e a, e a which is my e 0 0. 
you can see this is sum over a chi a h chi a plus so this sum over a is here sum over a b chi a chi b correct which is different from e Hartree-Fock because the half factor is missing here. Now when I add e naught 0 plus e naught 1 this minus half will come okay and you will get back sum over a chi a h chi a my plus half a b chi a chi b this one minus half would give me the plus half and that is exactly the Hartree Fock energy. So, this is a very long way to derive. Remember, I initially told you very quickly because you just add H naught and V, you get H. But if somebody is not convinced, show me by really Slater rule, integration, you can show it, no problem, okay. You can actually integrate and show that the result that we got is exactly stands true. And of course, if I, I have done just for a F naught plus H naught plus V. You do H naught prime plus V prime does not matter, you just scale, scale, add something and subtract something. Anyway, that is much easier to say, see, okay. So, it is a long algebra if you do it this way because I am first calculating this, calculating some of the orbital energy, then I am adding, then I find that what was missing here from E Hartree Fock, this half factor, that is comes back because this contain minus half. This comes because of the following reason that you have first the 1 by r 1 2 power which is just which has actually has half. Then when I subtract the V Hartree Fock, it does not have the half. So, you get a full minus 1. So, you get a minus half. So, you remember the same term is coming in various ways. This chi a chi b anti-symmetrized chi a chi. Originally, I had E Hartree Fock as half of this. E naught 1 is half of this minus 1 of this. It gives me minus half add that to e naught 0, I get back half. It is just really playing with 1 and half, okay, plus half minus half. So, it is nothing, it is a very simple algebra, but make sure that you are convinced. And I would put it the way I put it, that is e naught 0 is size Hartree Fock, h naught psi Hartree Fock, e naught 1 is psi Hartree Fock, v psi Hartree Fock, add that you will get Hartree Fock energy, okay. So, that is easiest way to understand, but I think this long expression is important because you learn that whatever Slater rule you have learned, you know you can apply and get the same results, okay.